One of the questions I get asked a lot on here, it comes up regularly in comments, is what about the future? And I've talked before about the possibilities for the future and making goals for 2025 because at the moment I still feel like I am doing things in incremental amounts. For me, I find it much easier to deal with things in small chunks than look at the overall picture. And one of the things is that I don't have an overall picture at the moment. So I know that there are certain things which are likely to happen in the future of people around me which are going to dictate the direction of my life and that is that predominantly is around my parents who are getting very close to 80 they are fit healthy people but they are getting close to 80 now they could still be around at 100 I don't think it's likely not that many people get that far, but they could still be around in 10 years' time. So part of my future aspiration, so to speak, isn't what happens when they're gone. It's what happens whilst they are still alive. And I am happy to allow what may come in the future with my parents to dictate that. Now I know not everybody wants to do that, that not everybody is interested in putting their parents before them, but I am happy to be dictated by however long they've got, what their health is like, and I am happy to be there to be used in whatever way helps them. That is like a core thing for me. And part of that is because growing up, I was not a great daughter. I distanced myself quite a lot from my parents growing up. Um, I got, I used to be very easily influenced by people around me. I was very easily brainwashed by um, people who wanted to take me away from my family. And that happened to me on multiple occasions. And it's one of the reasons that I prefer to be single is because when there is another person in the middle dictating what you should and shouldn't be doing, I find it very hard to balance that up. And I've also always been very, very bad at picking partners and always ending up with partners who had no interest in my family at all. So I've made some very hard and fast rules about the boundaries of that. Um, I think the chances of me getting into a relationship in the future are zero. That's predominantly because I don't want to. It's because since I discovered that I could be independent, however I wanted to be independent, um, it's just the best thing I've ever done. It means I can do what I want, when I want, and I don't have to worry about other people beyond my, my immediate family and I'm fine with that. I am also still quite a long way from my family. I live quite a long way away so I don't get as much time with them all as I would like and so the time that I do get is very important to me and I wouldn't want to put any more distance between that so sometimes people ask me if you thought about moving to another country. No, absolutely not. Um, for one, I don't want to be that far away. I'm already too far away from family as it is. Secondly, I don't know where I would want to go. I couldn't just stick a pin in a map and go, oh, I'll just go there. There have to be reasons for me to go places to want to do things. But in terms of thinking about the future, A lot of how I was moulded in my younger years, like many of us, was you aspire to getting the job. 
you aspire to uh, getting a house, you aspire to having the relationship and then you aspire to settling down and being secure. Um, I wasn't any good at any of those things and I was constantly hopping between leaving bad situations, trying out new ones which I thought might work, realising they didn't and then constantly moving onwards and upwards and around. And for a lot of that time I'd always been led to believe that you need, you need a high paying job, you need lots of money and you have to be very, very secure to be able to be independent. So I always assumed that I would have to live in houses with other people, whether partners or house shares, because there was no way I could possibly afford to live on my own on what I was earning. And that's when I was earning more than I am now. So when I had the, the wonderful realisation uh, just like eight years ago that actually I didn't need to have another paying person alongside me to be able to to live. That was quite a revelation. But it wasn't until I got into where I'm living now that I was able to really embrace that. And that has that has been an amazing thing and I think that probably was an aspiration of mine. It was a goal to be able to be independent, an aspiration to not be tied to a partner. I realised, um, I think probably, let me have a think, nine years ago that I didn't want to be in relationships anymore, that it didn't doesn't work for me, that I don't have the goals in my mind that require that. I couldn't see how a partner could fit in with the things that I wanted in life um, and just having them there because it was a double income and kept a roof over your head is not a good reason for it and as I said before seeing as I'm not very good at picking partners I'd always end up with narcissists and toxic people and all that sort of thing so I was happy to admit defeat and walk away from that and it's been a great eight or nine years since I made that decision and since I've been single and so that has been an aspiration. Since then of course um, all sorts of different things. I've moved city quite a lot, I've moved place quite a lot and then of course um, I moved up to the north, I got my studio uh, after however many years I lost the studio but I had this place so I'm working from home and then having to reassess um, reassess that and of course COVID and cost of living and everything makes you reassess everything else. So my goals have come along in small amounts so my recent, my goals since I moved into this place six years ago have been to stabilise my income. Um, I was neglecting a lot of my income and I know people keep saying oh you should live now, spend the money, all that sort of thing but that's not how I work. And I knew that there were things that I needed to address that I hadn't and I couldn't at the time, like retirement. Retirement funding has been on my mind for quite a long time, has been a big concern of mine because you can't predict what's going to come in the future. And, you know, I can say, oh, well, my parents will leave me some money, but I don't know that. You don't know what's going to happen. And so I... I know that at least now I need to address that myself. I'm a grown up. I shouldn't be just hoping for the best in the future that I'm going to inherit. That's a really daft way to plan for your retirement. And ignoring it now means that I could spend the rest of my life paying for it. And what if I end up living to 80 or 90 years old in whatever condition I am in and I am you know, not making ends meet. I don't want to be in that situation. I know people that's happened to. I know people who are living now in such a situation that I really, really worry for their old age future um, and where they're going to end up. Um, so a lot of what's happened over the last six or seven years 
has been a slow incremental getting getting some goals in place, getting some milestones in place so that I can then think about what I want to do with a longer term future. So particularly since so 2019 was when well the end of 2018 was when my business really changed and when my income completely changed I was doing pretty well things were quite good and then suddenly everything changed and most of my income was gone um, within six months I'd lost my studio and I was here and I had to completely restructure how I made a living so I've really started again from there and of course that was 2019 and then of course Covid came along blah 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 so constantly I'm having to change goalposts so since Covid came along the way business works has changed I can't rely on my business to bring me an income anymore how do I look at other ways of uh, making a living without going back to office life, nine to fives. I got out of that in 2009 and I swore I'd never go back to it. So I knew that I was going to have to play clever how I was going to avoid that and I've done that. So since 2022, which was my lowest ever income, I earned only 9,000 that year and I've been, I was topping up my life with my savings and the savings were going down and going down and going down and I was getting really worried that if I didn't make a change I was just going to end up broke and ending up back living with my parents with no future at all. So I worked on that, I've worked hard on that since 2022 and as of now I am just at the point where I think okay I'm no longer worrying about money. I don't make an enormous amount of money. I don't spend an enormous amount of money. I am making a little bit of savings every year, so I'm earning more than I spend. I've got my uh, my pension set up. You know, it's not going to be enormous amounts of money, but it will top up other things. So I've got my uh, private pension. I've got my stocks and shares ISA. Um, I have a six month emergency fund, I'm building up a car fund so that when my car eventually dies on me I will have some ready cash which will enable me to buy another car because I can't get credit because I'm self-employed and because my income is very erratic and small so I can't get credit for anything. Even though I have a good credit score um, I can't even get a credit card unless it's one of those guaranteed deals through your, uh, your credit score provider. I can't get anything so I can't rely on things and I don't want to get into debt anyway I have no debt I haven't had debt in years and I absolutely do not want to have debt again so the little aspirations that I've had in recent years suddenly feel like they've been met so now what comes next well I made a video not so long ago about what I was thinking of for 2025 and I've mentioned it in other places as well that I think, well, 2025, could that be the year that I finally move back south again? Can I do that? Is that something that I can aspire to do? Now that's going to cost a lot of money. My expenses are going to go up. My cost of living is going to go up because I live in a very cheap north and down south is not cheap. But that would give me the basis of getting back next to, back to family again which is a small aspiration. If I had all the money in the world, if money was not an object, there is a, probably a million things I'd do. I'd probably go and travel around the world. I would probably buy that luxury camper van and, you know, drive, drive the entire coast of the UK. Or I'd do what I've seen on another channel I've started following recently with a guy who's just decided I'm just going to go and hike. And he's packed up a tent and packed up some stuff and he's just gone. He has no income, he has no nothing, but he's doing it. And if I didn't worry so much about my financial future, I would do something like that. And if I had a million quid and I knew that everything was going to be okay, then I'd go and do something like that. But I am more cautious than that, that's just the way I am. But if I had all the money in the world, what would I do? Well, I would 
I would buy a property, but I would get something in the country where I could continue to run my little business from home as a uh, almost like a, a half paying hobby. I would have that little property in the middle of some land. I would buy some acres of land and I would surround it with wildflower meadow and I would rescue battery hens and have an allotment. Now that's not buying the latest car. That's not going on an expensive holiday. You know, that's not jet setting off to New York or I don't know, whatever else people aspire to. And beyond reaching those little goals that I'd set, I can't think what I would want to do. I'd always had aspirations. I wanted to set up a business. I wanted to publish a book. Um, I did those things, for better or for worse. I never said I wanted to be massively successful at them. I said I wanted to do them. And I think if your aspirations are Elon Musk style, then that's a whole different ball game. Um, I'm not a competitive person. I don't really have many wants. And I think that when, when if you ask somebody, you know, what what would you want in the future? What would your goals be? Most people would probably tell you something that involved spending money or having to have money to be able to do it. But I don't really want that. I, I'm happy to be comfortable within my, my own barriers, my own ideas of what comfortable is which isn't really that far off what I'm what I'm on now so I don't know what I want apart from that at the moment but then every time I do something new it inspires me to look into something else or do something else one of the things I wanted to do when I was more comfortable with my income level was just to be able to go out and take days out and I've started doing that now so I'm starting to do the hikes which makes an enormous difference to my week and I'm happy doing that at the moment that has added a lift to my week and I really enjoy that it's challenging me again it's getting me out of myself and out of this flat and somewhere nicer and less noisy and less polluted and I really like that. But I don't know at the moment where I go from there. And I know that there are lots of people who they don't have aspirations in, beyond I just have the nine to five job I like to go out and have a drink on a Friday night and I like to hang out with my mates and my family and I know lots of people whose, whose daily lives are like that they are literally just doing the basics and lots of people are happy with that you don't ha not everybody has to have aspirations you don't have to want to conquer the world my aspirations are perhaps are a bit beyond that because the 2.4 lifestyle was never really for me, I suppose. So even though I have no one really dictating to me how I live my life, it's very much introvert based. So long as I don't have to deal with a bunch of people, I'm fine. If I was living in a house share or as a lodger, my aspiration would be to get out of there, to, to be able to be financially sound enough to not have to live like that. And that again took me a while. Um, I was 42 when I finally was able to live on my own for the first time in my entire life. Um, so it was always a bit of a pipe dream of mine that I would be able to do that and then it happened. And I, I'm still here, I'm still doing that. 
so some of the tick box things you know I've done I've done some of my bucket list things so say I did the book um, I started the business which still exists I never I never aspired to massive things with the business I never wanted to be a famous fashion designer. I never wanted to have a shop on every high street. I was never like that. I've never been like that. I just wanted it to be my little corner of the universe where I had a brand that made things. And it was really just to sate my creativity, to give it more aim than just being a hobby. I wanted to be able to sell what I made um, because you just can't keep everything. And so I did that, and I still do that to a certain extent. Um, I think I'm waiting to be inspired, and you can be, you can have these latent points in your life where you're just coasting because you're just waiting for that next thing to inspire you. And I feel like I'm in that place at the moment, having this year, really with only in the last couple of months reached that financial point where I can say okay I'm not I'm not worried about finances anymore I'm not panicking things are ticking over nicely and if everything stays as it is I won't worry but that's very recent and now I have the rest of the year and I'm thinking right what do I do with the rest of this year to make it worth it and being able to spend a little bit of that money allowing myself to go out and reconnect with nature again on the hikes the way I do now. That's a good part of that. What happens next year, as I've talked before, maybe I can get to move south. Maybe I can at least start to think about it and plan it. Because there's a good chance it won't happen next year. It's a very fine line when you're trying to move. It's the logistics. I've never had to move with a full house of stuff. I've always lived very small. When I've been in house shares, I've lived with other people. Most of the stuff in it has been other people's. I've never had any furniture. I've never owned a bed. I've never owned a sofa suite. And so being able to downsize effectively or manage to move on my own, like if I found somewhere down south, how do I pack all of this up and move it south on my own because there isn't anyone to help me? Now, I could hire removal people, and but I, I don't want them to be driving the vehicle because I can do that. I just need the people who will come and pack the van for me. So I'd probably end up finding a couple of handymen who can just come in and move stuff for me. And these are the little, the little tiny details that I think about the practicalities because whenever I've moved, I've just filled the back of my car three times and I've moved. And now I'm kind of saddled with stuff. Stuff has become the thing that kind of ties me down, really. I and mean, that's why I have a lot of, of skip-dive furniture and um, stuff that I've built myself and whatever is because it has no worth if if I have to move and I have to like massively downsize I can give this stuff away I don't care it's, there's nothing sentimental here it's only sentimental stuff that I'm worried about there is nothing sentimental here um, all the sentimental stuff is at my parents so emotionally I'm very tied to that place but not here everything pretty much can go the only logistics will be the business because obviously that's partially income. Um, but there isn't, there isn't really any point in me worrying about that right now because that is a, a pipe dream. It's one of those things that you can worry about when it, when it comes to it. So, future, I don't know. I'm doing it in bite-sized pieces at the moment. I'm just happy to feel more settled and more in control than I was this time last year. To feel a little bit more secure. To know that if there's an emergency or if something happens to this, that or the other, that I don't have to ask anyone for help financially. Um, and if I had a massive catastrophe, then yes, 
I know I could be helped out, but I've never asked for financial help before, and it's not something that I want to start now. So I don't know, this is a bit of a rambling entry because I don't really have an answer. I don't have any hard and fast desires for the future. My future is basically me. But I'm willing to be inspired if the right thing comes up. And the right thing is more likely to show itself if I'm getting out there and doing stuff, which is why I've started to now invest a little bit of that money back in just getting out and going out and doing things and seeing stuff and filling my mind with other things that are outside the home. I mean, I don't think I know anybody that has any aspirations beyond just keeping a roof over their heads at the moment. Um, I have one friend who aspires to open a glamping site in Wales. That's her inspiration for the future. Um, but I don't know anybody else who doesn't look beyond beyond the end of the week because there are too many challenges at the moment to think that far ahead but it's nice I do like that I'm now at that point where I can start thinking about that that I've not that I've been able to stop worrying about well let's worry about this week and the end of next month and the end of this year I can now think well what does the entire future look like? and the entire future is a long time you don't know who you're going to meet next week or what's going to inspire you, or what's going to happen that will completely change everything. So that's where I am at the moment. I don't have an answer to what I want for the future. I'm just thankful that I'm kind of in a place where I can now start to think about that. Um, but I don't know what it looks like. But I don't want to waste the rest of my life just sitting around thinking, uh, maybe next week I'll do something. So I know that things tend to brew in my mind for quite a long time before they happen. And I have quite long snapping points um, before I say, right, enough is enough. I have to do this, this, that or the other. I'm not at that point now. At the moment, I'm just enjoying the fact that things are ticking over without stress. Um, I'm not worried about things. Um, I'm enjoying the fact that life is relatively easy for me compared to a lot of people I know. And I'm thankful for that. And that's it, I think. That encompasses the future at the moment. I don't know what it, I don't know what it looks like. And that's, that's okay. I can cope with that. That'll do for now. Speak to you soon.